Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 78. It's on system boundaries. And we can think of this person playing pool as a system. You can see they're just about to break. So they're going to hit the cue ball and it's going to slam into all the other balls. And so we can think of that whole thing as a system. And the amount of linear momentum is going to be conserved. That momentum within the system is going to stay the same. And so watch this interaction between a number of different objects. So we're going to have the one on the right slide into the other ones. Like that. So you can see we're transferring some of that momentum. So let me rewind for a second. And so if you were to draw a line around the system, if you want to solve the problem of what's going on with this momentum, you would draw the system right here. And the reason why is the object on the left is not really interacting with the other objects. And so to make this problem easier to solve, we just eliminate that other object. And so let me give you a, an analogy. Let's say we have these three people and they've got varying amounts of money and fruits. And the person on the left, the man on the left in the blue, asks the woman in blue if he could buy an apple. He says, I'll pay you a dollar for that apple. And she says, no, it's a really nice apple. You're going to have to pay me more. Well, what about a dollar fifty? Well, that's still not enough. Well, what about two dollars? Yeah, you could buy this apple for two dollars, and they exchange two dollars for the apple. Now, what's being conserved in this problem? Everything is conserved. Everything stays the same. The amount of bills, the amount of coins, the amount of fruit are all maintaining the same. But we could make this problem easier to solve. Let me rewind it for a second. So who could we eliminate from the problem? Well, the woman in the upper right isn't even part of the problem, so we could eliminate her. The banana's not part of it. The coins aren't part of it. Or these bills down here aren't even part of it. And so really what we're doing is transferring this money for this apple. And so as we do that, a, an easier way to solve this problem is to define this as our system. And so the boundary around these objects, it makes it easier to solve the physics problem. And so let's actually do a physics problem. If I have one apple sliding across a counter and colliding with another apple, we're transferring momentum from one apple to another. But if I rewind it again, where would you draw the system? What are you going to include in that system to make it easier to solve this problem? Well, I would include both apples because they're clearly part of this collision. Would you include the table they're on? I would because there's clearly frictional forces going on. You may want to also include the air because there may be some air resistance going on there as well. But we're not going to include anything outside of that. We're going to, defect, we're going to set our system as this and that makes it easier to analyze this problem. And so did you learn that the boundary between the system and the environment is chosen by the person solving the problem simply to simplify analysis of that problem? I hope so and I hope that was helpful.